من بعد صوروا على لبنان بس نشوف الصور يقولوا لنا انه يمكن جايبين ولد ثاني مش هو اللي بيطلع بحسين بالاول ما بيعرف انه هلا حسين انه هو ذاته Really, I hadn't seen a patient like that in 15, 20 years. About three, four weeks in, I thought we were going to lose him, that he wasn't going to make it through, but he did. SCID stands for Severe Combined Immune Deficiency. It's commonly known as boy in the bubble disease. SCID is a genetic disease in which you're born with basically complete absence of the protective immune system. So skid babies look perfectly normal when they're born. There's nothing visible. But once they start getting out into the world and getting exposed to all the bacteria and viruses, they can't fight them off. So it was essentially a uniformly fatal disease until we had treatments. You know, it's, it's really scary for the families, I think. It's one of the challenging parts of, of being a, a doctor and a pediatrician. You know, what we do is so high-tech and so complicated, but we need to talk to parents who, you know, haven't been to medical school, certainly. All my years as a bone marrow transplant physician, I, you know, I've learned how you talk to, to people in, in ways that are meaningful for them to understand, and sort of it's a partnership making a decision of what might be best for their child. Well, what I think is so interesting about gene therapy is it's, it's working at such a fundamental level. With gene therapy, you're actually going in and fixing the gene problem that causes these different blood cell diseases. So collecting the stem cells is basically a small operation that we would call a bone marrow harvest. And then the work begins in the lab. So they remove the red blood cells and they purify the stem cells. And then they put the cells into culture and the next day they add to the cells and culture the virus that we made that carries the gene that's missing. So the stem cells, they kind of go everywhere in the body, but they kind of have address labels. They have proteins on the surface that make them stick when they happen to pass through the bone marrow. And those blood cells will inherit that normal gene that we put into the stem cells when they were in the lab. And so usually by about two or three months after the transplant, we can start seeing blood cells in circulation that are carrying the normal copy of the gene we put in there. In the first few years, it's, can they go to Chuck E. Cheese? Can they go play on the playground? Can they have a turtle? But then it gets to be things about, you know, they send us their kindergarten graduation pictures. It's just wonderful to follow all these patients and know that, you know, we played a role in keeping them healthy. The Stem Cell Center really went to work on raising the philanthropic funds to support bringing him here. To tell children's hospitals, doctors, nurses, the UCLA health system. We've also had great funding over the years from the Doris Duke Charitable Foundation, the National Institutes of Health, and, and then more recently from the California Institute for Regenerative Medicine, or CIRM. And so it really took this whole village of people to come together to treat this child. There's several other gene and diseases. One of them is sickle cell disease. It turns out it's, it's more technically challenging, so a lot of the work in my lab has been focusing on how can we treat sickle cell disease. There's probably several hundred genetic blood cell diseases, each of which could be treated by gene therapy. We're very likely to have much more effective ways of doing that over the future. So I think we're very much at the beginning with a lot more advances to follow. Around 50 patients from our various trials have had really successful immune reconstitution where they're living normal, healthy lives, not needing antibiotics, not having infections. To have a patient as sick as Hussein was and see him turn around and now be a healthy, normal boy is, is, is wonderful.